All right, so now I want to talk about uh, alkanes. So alkanes are um, type of organic molecule that only have carbon, carbon, and carbon, hydrogen single bonds. So alkanes are going to be kind of the simplest type of these molecules that we look at. Um, they can actually come in a couple different forms. They can either be acyclic, which is what we're going to talk about right here. Um, these ones can also be referred to as linear. So linear in that they don't have a ring structure or a cyclic structure would be kind of like a ring. And if you remember a previous um, lecture, I kind of talked about how that could be called an organic structure. We would call that cyclobutane, where that cyclo means it's a ring form. So they can come in either form. We're going to start off with the acyclic ones. They're um, acyclic alkanes are going to be these linear ones. Kind of if you look down here at the bottom at this undecane molecule, it's an example of that. So acyclic or linear alkanes have the general formula of CnH2n plus 2. So what that means is if you have a molecule that has 11 carbons, all right, so if you look down at undecane, it has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 carbons. So that would be C11. How many hydrogens are there? Well, we could go through and count them individually, but since we know it's an acyclic alkane, we can also say it's going to be 2N plus 2, which would be H24. So you double it, and then you add two extras. And the reason you add the two extras, again, looking down here at this, um, at this structure, so remember all of the black spheres are carbons, then the little white or gray spheres are hydrogens. Um, all of the all of the carbons in the middle basically have two hydrogens attached to them. So if we look at all of those right in there, each carbon has remember all your carbons have four bonds. So in this case, all of those carbons have two bonds to a hydrogen. So one bond to one hydrogen, one bond to another hydrogen, and then one bond each to a different carbon, right? So basically in order to keep the chain, it has a bond to carbon on either side of it, and then two hydrogens. So that's why for every carbon, there's basically gonna be two hydrogens. But then we have the plus two, right? The two and plus two there. Well, those two extras are because here at the very end of the molecule, right, where that is and where that is, those actually, those carbons each have three each. And if you remember in a previous, in that intro to the organic chemistry video that I made, um, I mentioned that CH3s are often caps, or they're found at kind of the end of molecules. Well, in this particular case, we have CH3s on the ends of the molecules that serve as these caps. So you have a CH3 on one side, you have a CH3 on the other side, and these are the caps. So instead of those ones being 2N, each one has one extra hydrogen, so we get the 2N plus 2 because we have one extra there, one extra there, so that's going to be the extra plus 2. So yeah, the main thing to keep in mind is that on the ends of these molecules, you have these CH3 groups. Those are the caps, and that's where these extra hydrogens come from. Okay, so another term that is shown on this slide is this um, saturated alkane. So it says acyclic alkanes are called saturated alkanes. Um, let me go ahead and erase some of my drawing here. Um, so if you go back and kind of look at this structure again, you, you'll notice that every single carbon is kind of packed with hydrogens. And if you remember again, carbons can only have four bonds total. So if you were to pick a random carbon, let's look at that one right there. We can't put an extra hydrogen on that carbon anywhere because it would have too many bonds, right? So saturated alkanes, basically there's no way to get any more hydrogens on there, so we call them saturated. So whenever you have this formula of CnH2n plus 2, those are going to be saturated alkanes. Okay, so going through and talking about the alkanes, we're basically going to keep a list and we're going to talk about alkanes from one carbon up to 10. And I just want to 
basically you need to go through and memorize the names of all of them. Um, and as I go through and talk about them, I just want to give a little bit of details on each of them. So the simplest alkane is going to be methane, one carbon long, CH4. Um, looking at this 3D representation, just a reminder that this wedged line right there, that means that that hydrogen is coming out towards you, like out of the plane of the screen towards you. This dashed line in the back means that that hydrogen is going away from you. If you look at the ball and stick model, that reminds you of the bond angles and the fact that it has a tetrahedral um, geometry, right? So these are things that we've talked about before that you do still need to know, right? Tetrahedral. So again, most carbons are going to have tetrahedral geometry, particularly if they don't have any double bonds, right? Um, ethane is a two carbon alkane. So now we're going, growing to one larger. So over here, this is going to be the complete structure. This is the complete structure. This one over here, you would refer to as the condensed structure. So remember, condensed is whenever you take those, um, the lines out. All right, so that would be ethane in both a complete and a condensed structure. And you can see the other representations below. Um, propane is a three carbon alkane. So again, you have the condensed structure and a complete structure. And we can even add another one here. We could draw the skeletal structure. Remember the skeletal structure says that, um, it says that on the end of your carbon, so whenever a line ends, like right there, you have a carbon with as many hydrogens to give it four bonds. So that would refer to that carbon and then the three hydrogens around it. This one would be your CH2 that's in the middle. Then this one would be that CH3 that's over there, right? So again, just kind of a reminder on drawing these structures and the difference between a condensed, a complete, and a skeletal structure. Um, so propane brings up an interesting uh, topic here, and it's something that often confuses people, and that is that you can draw these things in different ways. So if you look at the um, structure on the left, all the carbons are in a row. So here it's, you know, you have a carbon, then a carbon, then a carbon. They're all lined up nice and neat. It's a CH3, a CH2, then another CH3. Um, and it says here that this is equal to, in other words, there's no difference between the structure on the left and the one on the right. And if we look at the one on the right, I'm going to kind of circle these. So that's a CH3, just like that's a CH3. And then you have a CH2, which is exactly like this CH2. And then you have another CH3 down here, which is exactly like that's CH3. So the important thing here is that the bends in the carbon chain don't matter when it comes to identifying the compounds. Both of these are propane. Um, they're both the exact same thing. What happens is these bonds are flexible and can move. So these carbons are always twisting around in the, with that tetrahedral geometry. So it really doesn't matter where you draw the H's and, the, and any carbon attached to it. So if we were to look at that particular carbon, right? It has an H up and an H to the right and then a CH3 down. We could draw the CH3 up and then the H on the right and the H down, it would be the exact same thing. We could draw the CH3 on the right. So it really doesn't matter where you put each of the components that are attached to that particular carbon, All right? So that's gonna be important in particular when we start talk about naming these compounds, which we'll do in a later um, video of this chapter. Um, so the bends don't matter when it comes to identifying. All we're looking at is how many carbons in a row there are. Okay, so that brings us to butane, which is a four carbon alkane. So butane again has four carbons in it. So it's gonna have a formula of C4H10. Um, so C4H10 is gonna be butane. And butane can actually have two different representations. So butane and isobutane. Now these ones, they are not equal to each other. These ones are actually called isomers of each other. So I'm gonna to go to the next slide and come back. 
So isomers are when you have two compounds, two different compounds that have the same molecular formula, but they differ in the way that the atoms are connected to each other. So in this case, we're talking specifically about constitutional isomers. So in chapter 11, we're going to talk about a different type of isomer called stereoisomers. But in this particular case, we're talking about constitutional isomers, which means that the atoms are connected to each other in a different way. So again, same chemical formula, right? In the case of butane and isobutane, they're both C4H10, but they're connected in a different way. And what I want to do is I actually want to go down to this example of constitutional isomers that's shown here with ethanol and the dimethyl ether. So both of these are going to be c 2 H six O. So if you go through and count, both of them have two carbons, uh, six hydrogens, and one oxygen. But if you look at them, you can tell that they're very clearly different. Ethanol has a CH three, then a CH two, and then an OH. This one has a CH three, and then kind of an O, and then another ch3 so it's obvious that they are connected differently ethanol has an o that's bound to an h dimethyl ether does not right so this is an example of what we mean by isomers and in particular constitutional isomers same formula different way that atoms are connected so now if we go back to butane and isobutane doing the same thing i've been doing i have a ch3 a CH2, a CH2, and a CH3. If I come over here, I have a CH3, and then I have a CH. I don't have a CH2 like I did with butane. I just have a CH, and then I have a CH3 over here, and I have a CH3 up there. So notice, I'm specifically looking for the carbons and what the, they're attached to. In other words, my first carbon on the left, it's a carbon, what's it, what is attached to? three hydrogens and then it's attached to a CH2 for butane and then for isobutane that other thing that's attached to is a CH. All right and then we put the C's together with the H's but we don't include the other carbons that are attached to them. So in other words for isobutane over here we don't say that you have a CH3 attached to a CHCH3 or anything like that. We just talk about it's attached to CH3 attached to the CH. The key here is that you can tell that they look different. Um, if we were to write these as condensed structures, notice this CH3 goes there, CH2 goes there, CH2 goes there, CH3 goes there. For isobutane, you have a CH3, then you have kind of the CH, and you have a CH3 there, and then you have another CH3 there. Again, these are going to be called constitutional isomers because they are same chemical formula, C4H10, but they're connected differently. In other words, I couldn't just hand you some a chemical and say, this is C4H10. I would have to tell you whether it's butane or isobutane because they're going to have different properties because they are different chemicals. Okay, so moving forward, um, here's an example of pentane. So pentane is a five carbon alkane has even more potential isomers if you look down there at the bottom where it has pentane and isopentane and neopentane, right? So these are all different ways to represent a five carbon um, alkane. So again, you would have to identify which one you have. Um, so pentane, all of those are gonna have five carbons and they're gonna have 12 hydrogens, right? Because it's two N plus two for all of these alkanes. So you don't need to know, I'm not going to ask you like, oh, here's pentane, how many isomers does it have? I just want you to be able to say, if I show you, say, this structure, and I show you this structure, you should be able to tell me those are isomers of each other. How would you know that? Well, you look at their, count up how many carbons you have, count up how many hydrogens you have, both of them are, you're going to have C5H12, and then you say, well, are they connected differently? Well, yes, they are, right? One has CH3, then three CH2s and another CH3, whereas neopentane has four different CH3 groups attached to another carbon, so they're connected differently. Okay, 
So you need to know up to decane. So we already talked about, and I'm gonna write a list for you. One carbon was methane, two carbons was ethane, three carbons was propane, four carbons was butane, and then five carbons was pentane. So now you have it all in one place. You need to know methane, ethane, propane, butane, pentane, hexane, heptane, octane, nonane, and decane, right? And after pentane, like from five up to 10, those prefixes should be pretty helpful in terms of identifying, remembering the names. I personally think the first four are the more difficult ones. Those are the ones you're going to see more often just because they're shorter. Um, so that's really what you need to know in terms of alkanes. And in the next video, we'll talk about how we're going to use um, these names in terms of naming a complete, uh, a complete molecule.